construing or building wheels, half hole on the rim is an important reference. So now I will mark it so that it makes it harder for me to miss it and perhaps overdo some spokes. For marking, I use this paper tape that can be bought in stores that sell things for painting. It's rather cheap and very practical for this task. Now, before uh, doing any tightening or loosening spokes, spoke threads and nipple attachments to the rim need to be lubricated. For this, I use a thin oil, oil of low viscosity, and I thread, uh, I uh, lubricate both the threads and the nipple attachment to the rim from one side, and as I move the rim upwards, uh, the oil flows around and lubricates everything. After I've done the whole circle around the whole rim, I will not show it all everything on the video, make it shorter. I will just spin the wheel and let the centrifugal force do its job so that oil is spread around all the nipples and along the threads. Now I will wi wipe off the excess oil of the rim so it doesn't make too much of a mess. This rim is now prepared for drawing. Since this rim has very uneven spoke tension, I will first unscrew all the nipples, loosen all the spokes, and then I will rebuild it properly and use it for demonstration. First go is once around the whole rim, loosening all the spokes about half a turn, and I will do so in several iterations so that sudden loss of tension of just a few spokes on one side of the rim doesn't cause the whole wheel to buckle and come out of shape. Not record the whole procedure because it will make a video very long, but I will go several turns around the rim un until all the spokes are loose. Now I have un untwisted, loosened all the spokes in several goes, several iterations around the whole rim, and have also re-lubricated the newly exposed spoke threads and nipple attachment to the rim so that it, it all nicely slides without friction and twisting spokes as much as possible. We'll now thread all the spokes in, all the nipples in by exactly the same amount. In order to achieve this, I have made a custom tool out of an old scru screwdriver. I will show it now in this video. I will show this screwdriver now in this video. It has filed sides and left just one sharp end, narrow, about three and a half millimeters long. So when it is screwed in, it turns the nipple inside until it is pushed out by the spoke becoming closer. And this disengages the screwdriver and guarantees that all the nipples are threaded in by exactly the same amount, as much as possible. Spoke length of a wheel is calculated and chosen properly. Having done this procedure around the whole rim, will also give me a relatively already true wheel, starting with a true wheel, with a proper dish. In this case, spoke length is not chosen properly, so I'll, I will get a wheel that is not properly dished, and I will need to fix it afterwards. It will be a bit more problematic and longer procedure building this wheel, but I have decided to reuse the spokes that are already on this wheel. Starting with a rim that is already reasonably true and well dished makes wheel building easier and quicker. Having now threaded all the nipples in by exactly the same amount. This shows the, the finishing, the last nipple near the valve hole. I now have uh, the spokes similar tension, where they are very loose, they don't have any tension yet. Now I can check for wheel dish and see if it is correct. In this case, it will be very much off and the wheel will be moved too far to the left rim, sorry, as will be shown by this 
code there it is if the spoke length was chosen properly there will be no need for so, uh, for large dishing corrections and while when building the wheel it would just take tightening all the nipples by approximately the same amount half a turn or first go around the wheel then in in, in lesser less dramatic dramatic amount and building the wheel to tension but in this case i will first have to fix this uh, vast dishing error I the the cassette is put just for demonstration lightly screwed on it will be now removed for the rest of the wheel build process in the continue of this video in order to correct this fast dishing error i will need to tighten all the spokes coming from the right hand side of the hub and loosen all the spokes coming from the left hand side of the hub we'll start first make one turn around the whole rim by uh, loosening the left hand side once by half a turn and tightening the right hand side once by half a turn also and i will check the dishing then if it is not enough i will then further tighten the right hand side spokes perhaps not loosening the left hand side spokes so they don't come uh, completely unscrewed but in several iterations i should uh, get the proper dishing and then continue with other other steps of the wheel building process it is better to do things gradually by slower smaller amounts smaller changes in tension than trying to do it all in one go because it can make uh, deformations and it can make uh, noticing any errors and fixing them a lot harder so after several goes i have managed to get the proper dishing here i will show one step of that process where i have not still reached the proper dishing and i need to do the wheel again in a few more turns to get it right now the dish is finally gotten right it's correct now as it will be shown in this video now here the same amount on the left and right side of movement and now the next step can be taken and that is taking slack from the spokes that is done by tightening all the nipples by uh, same amount in order to keep the rim as straight as possible and to also tighten all the all the spokes of course three wheels where the right hand side spokes go at a steeper angle to the to the rim than the left hand side spokes tightening the right hand side spokes by the same amount as the left hand side spokes will result in the wheel moving the rim sorry moving a bit towards the left hand side that is why when taking up the slack if a wheel is highly dished it is sometimes good to make uh, larger adjustments to the right hand side spoke tension for example tightening them by half of the half of a turn with a tool and tightening the left hand side spokes by quarter of a turn of a of a uh, of the nipple if the spoke length is chosen correctly this may not be needed but in this case it will it will be needed i will do this around the whole rim until all the spokes are reasonably tight and there is no play they are not slack so that i can continue with the next step after all the slack is taken out of the spokes but they are still not tightened they are still relatively and reasonably loose now they need to be aligned alignment needs to be done both at the nipple end where the spoke enters the rim and at the hub flange end nipple end alignment can be done by both alignments are done by hand so the nipple end can be done by uh, twisting and turning the nipple and the spoke to make the 
the entrance to the rim as gradual and as straight as possible, or even by twisting or uh, sorry pulling the two crossed spokes towards each other so that they can align align the uh, nipples better. And at the hub flange end, it is done by pressing strongly with a thumb about uh, the spoke about two centimeters from the spoke hole where it enters the flange. One needs to pay attention not to overdo it and to make another turn so that the spoke is not turned all the way inward, just so that it is aligned flat against the flange of the hub nicely bedded in. Spokes exiting the hub flanges at the inner side usually have the correct angle and also the right hand side spokes uh, are le less problematic in, in, that, in those terms. They, they have a, a better angle but the left hand side spokes that come from the outer side of the flange are critical and they need to be aligned. Of course even the right hand side's outer spokes need to be aligned and the in inner side spokes should also be checked just in case. After this is done some spokes may uh, become slack again because they are practically lengthened and in the next step all the slack will be taken after the alignment of the spokes. In this step I will practically redo the step number four of taking up the spoke slack. I will tighten each spoke by one quarter of a turn going around the whole rim. Checking if there is still any play looseness I will do another turn by one quarter of a turn tightening until all the slack is taken up. Now the spokes have been all aligned, all the slack has been taken out of them and now the next phase is making sure the rim is first laterally and then radially true. Lateral trueness means that the, the rim is not moving left or right and the radial trueness means that the rim's diameter does not change along the, along the uh, whole rim. It, it's, it's always the, almost the same. During this process I will also occasionally check for the dishing and make corrections if it is moving out of the center line. Since using these markers will help me see if the wheel is laterally true. The rim will move closer to one or the other marker. Even, even one marker can only be used just checking whether the rim moves closer to it or away from it. Some prefer to use two markers that is subjective and depends on the person building a wheel. Both methods are correct. Adjusting lateral trueness, I will use this tape as a demonstration so that places of the rim that are out of true can be marked and shown in the video as they are corrected. When making the wheel laterally true, tightening the spokes coming from the right hand side of the hub will move the rim to the right hand side and loosening them will move it to the, the opposite side, to the left hand side. Same goes for the spokes coming from the left hand side of the hub, from the left flange. Tightening the left hand side spokes will move the rim to the left, and loosening them will move the rim to the right. Now I have found one portion of the rim that is slightly out of true, moved a bit to the right, and I will try to compensate that with tightening the spokes. In this initial phase when the wheel is being built, most of the compensation and corrections are done by tightening the spokes since we want to move towards a highly tensioned built finished wheel. In the later stage, stages, the corrections can also be made by loosening some spokes because we don't want to overdo the total and the tension of each particular spoke. Here I have marked a portion of the rim where the rim is moving too much to the right it is only in one place I can uh, uh, correct that by tightening the left hand side spoke near the place where the, the out of trueness is mostly how to say pronounced and I can also do it by loosening the right hand side spokes but since the spokes are still 
very loose. I prefer doing corrections by tightening spokes. Of course, it should be paid attention so that uh, over tightening one spoke and doing too much corrections by just one spoke change of tightness, whether tightening or loosening, can make the rim go zigzag between adjacent spokes. It should be paid attention so that the rim stays about as straight as possible, following a straight line, and if, uh, out of trueness is exaggerated should be fixed by gradually tightening and loosening several spokes along the length of the portion that of the wheel that is out of true. In this case, only one short per portion of the rim is out of true and it goes relatively sharply to the right, so just tightening this left hand side spoke should correct it and make the rim straight. But in other occasions, sometimes more spokes need to be adjusted it's usually done by tightening the spokes or loosening the spokes nearer to the deflection mostly and then feathering out the adjustments as the spokes are moved left and right away from that area. For example, tightening one spoke half a turn and then the spokes that are further away by one quarter of a turn. I'm looking now at the markers and checking for trueness. What I will do now, since the portion that is out of true is still existing, I will further tighten the left hand side spokes, spoke that I have already tightened by quarter of a turn, I will tighten it by another quarter of a turn, and the adjacent left hand side spoke will be tightened by just one quarter of a turn, that should make the rim straight. If it if the deflection was a bit uh, more exaggerated, I would have to do it, fix it by doing several spokes, perhaps even loosening some right hand side spokes. But in this, like I said, in this phase when the spokes are very loose, it is better to go for uh, tightening spokes than for loosening them. After I have done this, I can move on to the next phase, and that is uh, making sure the wheel is radially true. I'll demonstrate how the rim moves when one spoke is tightened. You can see it near the marker, how the rim moves relative to the marker as the spoke is tightened. I'm not sure if it shows in the video how the rim has moved away from the, the right hand side marker. Now there is another portion where the, the rim is also a bit scratching the marker and this will be corrected by tightening one left hand side spoke and slightly loosening another right hand side spoke since this wheel is highly dished to the right hand side and uh, the right hand side spokes are already not very loose as the near not nearly as much as the left hand side spoke so in order to make the tension as equal as possible. In this case, I will, although the total tightness is not very great, go for also correcting the trueness by loosening one spoke. The choice of which spokes are tightened and which are loosened also depends on where the deflection is, where its center is. If it is between two spokes, then it is often better to make adjustments by tightening one and loosening the other, since it is somewhere in between. Otherwise, the total effect of when the wheel is finished will be that the rim moves a bit zigzag between adjacent spokes instead of following one straight line. I'm now checking if there is much of movement of the rim towards the right hand side. And since the, the rim is not moving anywhere sharply to the right, I will move the markers a bit to the left hand side Sorry, I will move them to the right so that I can use the left hand side gauge to see if there is any rim uh, deflection out of trueness going towards the left hand side. This can be done also by turning the wheel by 180 degrees, bar, but for making this video a bit clearer, I will just uh, adjust the gauges. This uh, drawing stand allows for that. I will make sure the gauges are straight in the middle 
with the wheel so that I can at the same time see any rim movement either to the left or to the right hand side. I've moved the, the throwing stand so that it can be shown in the video any, any lateral auto trueness. I'll make should always be done, a wheel should be spun around times so that uh, we can see the, the whole situation along the rim. Does it have any sharp bends? Does it have a tendency to go towards one side on one part? And that helps when determining which spokes to tighten and loosen and how to bring it back to the trueness. It's fairly simple, tightening one hand side, one side spokes and the other side moves it left, right and that is the, the whole point, just making sure that uh, longer and uh, sharper deflections of trueness are compensated by uh, tightening or loosening several spokes along the length of that out of trueness so there are no sharp bends between adjacent spokes. Here we have on the left hand side uh, an area of the rim where the rim moves a bit more to the left and it spans uh, around uh, over several spokes and I will mark here the beginning and the end of that section so that it can be visible on the video and I will now compensate for that out of trueness. Here we have two spokes that are in the middle of the critical area and then uh, we will uh, make uh, more adjustments turning them by one quarter of a turn or one half of a turn and the, the other two spokes that are near the, the ends of that section will be turned by half that amount so that the whole section is nicely put back in line, gradually. Here in the first go, I will tighten the right hand side spoke by one half of a turn and I will uh, loosen the left hand side spoke by one quarter of a turn. That is because uh, spokes coming from the left hand side on a rim with an offset dish have impact on the rim's lateral movement and tightening them uh, or loosening by the same amount as the right hand side will make greater impact. So in order to, to make them all equally uh, affect the rim trueness, I will just loosen the left hand side spoke by one quarter of a turn. I'll mark that area and after one go around the rim I will see if the, the rim is now all the way in the center or if I have to feather the, the trueness by tightening and loosening the spokes on the outer region of that deflection. Turning it now towards the camera so that it can be seen. Now we found the portion of the rim where the rim is moved a bit more to the right and uh, it is scratching the marker on the right hand side and I will first try to compensate that by tightening one left hand side spoke by just one eighth of a turn and see if that helps. Now I'm going around the rim and making fine adjustments by either tightening or loosening spokes and trying to make the wheel radially, lat sorry, ra laterally true. I'm always paying attention not to make too much adjustments over just one spoke and to keep the whole wheel as much as possible with an equal spoke tension so that all the left hand sides have the tension similar to the older the other spokes on that side and the same goes for the opposite side. Uh, here it's important to note that at the place where the rim is joined together either by welding or doing make, making some other procedure there can be a 
a slight uh, change in rim's thickness and also in diameter because that part is not uh, as easily as easily trued and making sure and trying to make that part perfectly true and bring the whole wheel out of balance because it would require spokes being much tighter or much looser which will make the whole wheel weaker if it has a few spokes that are much tighter or looser than their uh, than the other spokes on the same side of the wheel so some slack should be given at the part of the rim where the rim is joined together of course within some limits to of tolerance after the lateral trueness was achieved now it's time to make sure the wheel is radially true this when the wheel is uh, when spokes are have a low, a low tension is usually done by tightening the spokes that is looking for the places where the rim is a bit was a bit lower in in this or has a bit uh, larger diameter uh, the rim sticks out we want to find those sections and tighten the spokes that are near those sections and it is done so but by finding the top of that i, I will explain like a, a hill where the the rim moves outwards a bit more so the spokes that are adjacent to that part are tightened always done in pairs by tightening both the left and the right hand side spoke near that area and not by the same amount because that would affect lateral trueness if a wheel is dish for front for front wheel wheels that are not dish it is not done but for rear wheels that are highly dished the right hand side spoke should be uh, tightened a bit more and the left hand side spoke so that the, la the lateral trueness uh, remains good pairs of spokes further away from the, the top of the hill on, on the left and right side should be feathered out so if the spokes adjacent to the flexion are tightened by say half a turn for the right hand side a quarter or or three eighths of a turn on the left hand side then the spokes further away in pairs should be tightened by half that amount so that the compensation and the chewing is done gradually it is also important just like for lateral trueness to note that the part where the rim is joined together is not always perfectly even radially true and also some slack should be given to that um, that area because make, trying to get it perfectly radially true will re require a lot higher spoke tension or a lot lower on other parts of the rim and make the whole wheel weaker of course that is within some tolerances but up to one millimeter of radial trueness is can be considered okay this particular rim is double walled aluminium rim very strong and it is also new and in this case it only has a slight downward movement of the part where the rim is joined by about half a millimeter so i will not even try to compensate for that for the reasons that i have just explained The original video was recorded in Serbian, which is a lot better than my English, unfortunately. So now I'm explaining what I have just explained in English, probably a bit better in Serbian. What I will do after this is to check the wheel's dish as well, to make sure that I have not moved the rim to one side while doing all these, uh, these adjustments and truing. Uh, doing the wheel build uh, this should be checked occasionally to make sure we are on the right track this wheel is now properly dished after the wheel was both uh, laterally and radially trued now the next step is making sure that all the spokes have equal uniform tension for rear wheels of course that means that the left hand side spokes have tension equal 
or as, as equal as possible to the other left-hand side spokes tension, and the same goes for the right-hand side spokes. They should all have similar tension between each other, uh, going to about 10% of tension fluctuations of on one wheel, on one side of the, of the hub is acceptable. Within those tolerances, a wheel will be very strong and very well built. Of course, it is rarely possible to have exactly the same tension, but trying to make that as uniform as possible makes for a good and strong wheel. Checking for spoke tension can be done by using a tensiometer or by plucking the spokes. For this, I'm losing, using this guitar pluck. And I'm always holding my right hand on the top of the wheel and always plucking the spokes at the same portion near the markers of the throwing stand so that I don't influence the sound, pitch of the sound. Highly, spoked, uh, highly tensioned spokes will make a higher pitched sound and lower tension causes a deeper, lower pitched sound. Uh, smaller changes in tension produce uh, relatively high uh, changes in sound pitch. This system can be used, it is very cheap, can be used to check for tension differences. However, only a tension meter, tension meter can show the actual tension of each spoke, and that is important, especially for some wheels, because each rim has only a limited tension of total tension of all the spokes it can take. So overdoing, as well as making spokes slicker, less tension than optimal, is not very good. It will not make a strong wheel, and uh, that's why tension meter is very useful. When checking for uniform tension, I make it go around the whole rim and I mark uh, lower tensioned spokes and higher tension ones, these markers. The lower tension ones are marked near the bottom, near the nipple, and the higher tension ones are marked near the top. If a spoke is slightly out of the optimal tension range, I put the marker slightly higher or slightly lower to sim emulate that. And that gives me an overview of the whole rim as I go around and mark it. That way I can see how to compensate for spoke tension unevenness because if a loose spoke is on the left hand side and the rim is true as we have already made it true laterally and radially, that means that either the opposite, opposite side spoke is also a bit out of tension or its neighbor has higher tension so that that compensates and keeps the rim in line true but with not uniform tension. Depending on the situation I will use different techniques to equalize those tension and to bring all the spokes of each side to similar tension among each other. Having one spoke much looser than its uh, neighboring spokes on the same side of the, the hub coming from the same side of the hub will result in that spoke becoming looser and looser as the wheel is used and turned. It will start unscrewing at the nipple and it might uh, fatigue break at its elbow because of being too slack. The same goes for uh, spokes that are too tight. They will carry a lot more weight and load than the other spokes and they will become more, uh, more stressed and they will also break. Now for checking the spoke tensions, I use this tension meter. Its scale is, now it, it shows deflection of the spoke in millimeters. As it is pressed down by a spring of a known load, of a known strength. And the, the gauge is already calibrated for most commonly used spoke thicknesses. And it is exponential. That means that for lower spoke tensions, it shows a bit more movement and for higher spoke tensions. And now I will go around the whole rim and see what an average tension of each spoke on right and on the left hand side is. And then I will make another go. After I s determine my goal or the, the tension that most spokes have so that I need to make adjustments to the, the least number of spokes. After I make one go, I, like I've explained, I will mark the spokes that are much uh, higher, have much higher tension than that, that goal tension on the right and on the left hand side, also marking the ones that have lower tension. Uh, spokes that are within 10% of my goal tension will be 
left as they are because that is acceptable but all the others will have their tensions compensated and uh, adjusted so that they're all uniform. I will not show this in the video but I will make a go around the whole rim and mark so that I have a visual overview of tension changes and that I have a clearer picture of how to adjust that while not making the wheel become untrue. Now I have made a go around the whole rim and marked the spokes that don't have the proper tension, high or too low. I will start from the half hole and go turning the wheel forward, making adjustment. This one spoke has slightly higher tension, but the spokes that are adjacent to it on the same side and the spokes on the opposite side have tension within tolerances. So if I change that spoke's tension, since it is a bit highly higher tension has, I would make the wheel become untrue and move to the left. It is a right-hand side spoke. In order to keep the wheel laterally true and radially true, I'll make minor adjustments to the opposite side, to the two opposite left-hand side spokes. All the other cases are very clear and straightforward. Perfectly in pairs, left and right hand spokes are either too highly tensioned or have too low tension. So equalizing those, te those tensions without uh, disturbing wheel trueness can relatively easily be done by loosening both the left and right hand side spokes that are adjacent and also tightening the ones that need more tension. Also along that span of the wheel, as can be seen, it is also done so that Right on, on following spokes coming from the right hand side, there is one tight, one loose, one tight, one loose. Same goes for the left hand side. This explains why the rim is true, even though the spoke tensions are unequal. And this will be fixed now before going any further. I will make small adjustments and test it with a tension meter to see if I got the tension right. The tension can also be tested using a guitar plug, like I've shown before. It is important that spokes on the same side have approximately the same tension. I'm now double checking the tensions of the spokes adjacent to the spoke that needs to, that comes from the right hand side and needs to have a, a lower tension. And I'm trying to see if I can compensate for its uh, lowering of tension by lowering only one left hand side spokes tension or should I do both in order to keep the wheel true and in line? I'm also checking it on the truing stand to see if the, the rim moves drastically or if I lose some trueness. Now I'm checking if I've gotten the tension right. I have loosened the right hand side spoke by more, by almost uh, one eight quarter of the turn and loosened the left hand side spoke by a smaller amount because left hand side spokes move the wheel more drastically and I want a uh, lo lower change on that, uh, that side and also because the tension of the left hand side spokes was not out of line. And now I'm doing the same thing for, sorry not the same, but similar thing for the other spokes, tightening the, one that needs, the ones that need tightening and loosening the ones that need loosening. Also making sure that the adjustment, the amount of spoke key turn on the right hand side is higher than the amount of the spoke key turn on the left hand side since the wheel is highly dished. After I'm finished equaling all the spoke tensions I will make another check around the whole rim to make sure that all the spoke tensions are okay before I move to the next phase because sometimes loosening one spoke can uh, affect the tension of its adjacent spokes either from the same side or from the opposite side of the rim and that is why this procedure is best done in small steps, in small changes, adjustments, making several iterations like most other things about wheel building. With some experience and knowledge of working with the same model of spokes or rims, this can be made a bit faster, but often 
taking it slow and patiently it makes for a good wheel and make sure that nothing is done improperly or wrong all the spokes are still very loose in this uh, in this phase so there is no spoke twisting if when the spoke tension becomes higher then spoke twist will be another thing to pay attention to and to try to compensate for and also thinner spokes or swagged spokes that are thinned down in the middle are also more prone to spoke twisting even at lower tensions but these are thick straight pull spokes straight gauge spokes now I will remove all the markers check if the rim is still true after equalizing all the tensions and if it is true I will proceed with the following steps and if it is not I will first need to set its lateral and radial trueness before moving on to the next phase the next phase is stress relieving the spokes uh, that is important and it is done several times during the wheel build as the spokes are brought to their final tension and it is done once at the very end the whole mechanics of it will not be explained I will explain it on my site or in a book sometime someday but I will show the procedure of how the spokes are stress relieved okay this rim is still true there's no need for chewing it and now I'll proceed with stress relieving it is done by pulling together squeezing together two parallel pairs of spokes from left and right hand side strongly and it is important to keep the eyes away from the rim because if a spoke breaks during stress relieving it can fly out like an arrow through the rim hole and injure one's eye or face my head is pulled to the side I'm not sure if it shows in the video after this I can go on to the next stage which is tightening all the all the, the spokes further bringing wheel to the final tension during this process of tightening the spokes I will also while doing stress relieving check for the dish in, when building this wheel since it is highly dished and all the spokes are of the same thickness I will consciously allow it to move bit to the left so that the rim is off center to the left acceptable tolerance for wheel dish is one millimeter in the center either left or right and here I will make sure that it stays not in the center not to the right but if it has to have any error it will be towards the left hand side if I didn't do this the left hand side spokes would be either too loose or the right hand side spokes would be have to be very very tight and over tightening the spokes is not good because it can damage the interface of the nipple to the rim so here I'm going with the option to tighten all both the right and left hand side spokes at the same amount or quarter of a turn in this go and that will pull the whole rim a bit further to the left since the left hand side spokes have a better angle for pulling the wheel but I'm doing this as a compromise I'll cut this, source, this portion of the video, but I'm going around the whole rim, tightening all the spokes by the same amount. I've tightened all the spokes, and now I will again make sure that they are stress relieved, and also check for the wheel's trueness before moving chewing and finishing this wheel after I have stress relieved all the spokes I will once again check the wheel the rim for both lateral and radial trueness and fix it if it needs and then I will again check the evenness of spoke tensions like I've shown in step 8 so it is done in several iterations and I will fix it the same way as it was done in the step number 8 and again check for the trueness of the wheel fix that and then I will further tension spokes to the final ten final tension of the wheel doing several iterations as I go in the previous phase I have said that I will allow consciously the rim to move a bit to the left and that has happened and now I will move my uh, throwing stand gorge so that it is again dead center along the rim as it stays now that they can check for trueness both lateral and radial 
the gorge is not missed by a lot. It is still within tolerance, but it, the rim has moved a bit sideways to the left, as was expected. If I didn't allow the rim to move a bit to the left, I would either have to use uh, thinner spokes or swagged ones on the left-hand side, so they don't have too little tension, or like I said, put too much tension on the right-hand side spokes, which I'm trying to avoid here. I'm now checking the rim for trueness, both lateral and radial. There is some radial auto trueness only on the section where the rim is joined together, and it is not very much, but half a millimeter, and I will not even attempt to fix that because the, that would cause many other problems. I will now just do some fine lateral tuning and truing of the rim. Normal people would consider this still finished has proper decent tension of both the right and left hand side spokes, about 100 kilopond to the right and about 70 kilopond with left hand side spokes for a 36 spoked wheel. And uh, I'm doing just some fine tuning, tightening and loosening the nipples by just one eighth of a turn. And I'm also, because now the tension is a bit higher, making sure to, uh, to compensate for any twist it comes in, in when tightening spokes, so the best way to eliminate twist is to, while tightening a spoke, to feel it with the other arm, put a finger on the, on the spoke and see how much it twists. So if I, for example, want to tighten it by one eighth of a turn, I will first tighten the spoke by one quarter of a turn and then move one eighth of the turn back. It will make sure the spoke is untwisted because if that is not during, done during the wheel build, it will happen when the wheel starts to be ridden and the spokes will loosen and the wheel will become out of, out of true, the rim, and it will make a weaker and uh, a worse wheel. Another way to easily see how much spokes twist is to use the, the paper tape that I have used for other markings to put it on, onto a spoke that is being tightened and see how much the marker moves, rotates, and make sure that it is all compensated back while making sure that the spoke is tightened by the amount that was desired and required. This is another option. Once uh, uh, a man gets uh, used to a certain type of spokes, rims and nipples, he can have a good feel and he can have experience and know already how much spokes need to be turned back and to untwist at, at each given tension, but it is not bad to try to measure that with a few spokes at least to, to make sure that the spokes are not kept twisted. After this is done, after the whole wheel is trued, another stress relieving will be done and another check for spoke tension evenness. If the rim becomes untrue after the final stress relieving. That can mean two things. One is that the spokes have not been bedded in properly, but if all the other procedures are done properly with sp spokes alignment and stress relieving as the spokes are tightened, as I've shown, this is not very likely. Spos spokes will now already be tightened. So the other option, while the rim has come out of true after final stress relieving is that the, the strength of the rim, total spoke tension that the rim can take has been exceeded. This is especially important and it happens with weaker, not double walled rims. And what can be done in that case is to turn, to untwist, sorry, not to untwist, to loosen all the spokes by one half of a turn and then to bring wheel back to trueness and tension but by, by not going for more than one quarter of a turn to, to achieve that. That will keep the rim near its yield strength, but it will not make it too, too vulnerable and it will still allow for spoke tension to be decent. In order to not make this video too long, I will not now I will not show the, the procedure of now checking spoke tension again and making it even and fixing if there was any 
change and loss of both lateral and radial trueness, but those would be the final iterations if the desired spoke, uh, spoke tension has been achieved. I will now only show how to check for the spoke tension, see if uh, we have achieved the spoke tension that we want to achieve and that, uh, that makes for a, for a strong wheel. It needs to be optimal, not too low, not too high. Like uh, this instrument shows, the right-hand side spokes have about 100 kilopond tension and the left-hand side spokes about 70 kilopond. The vast difference in spoke tensions, even though the rim is moved a bit to the left, is because the wheel is highly dished. After this, if, uh, like I've said, it all it takes is to once again check and mark all the spokes that are too tight or too loose to compensate for that, like was in explained in previous previous steps, without losing both lateral and radial trueness, and once again check for lateral and radial trueness and fix it. It will take just some fine tuning at this stage probably. And finally, stress relieve the wheel and see if it has lost tension. Sorry, not tension, but trueness. In that case, the rim strength has been exceeded. But since we have used a spoke tension meter here, I am certain that this wheel has not exceeded its yield strength and that it can hold this spoke tension without any problems and it will make for a good wheel. That's it. Thank you for watching. I try to make this video as short as possible but explaining everything that is important. In the comments of this video I will recommend some books that explain this nicely and with pictures and diagrams but this is for someone who prefers to see things visually demonstrated.